Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at the brand new QNAP QHORA 301W that is their brand new Wi-Fi 6 and 10 GBE enabled router. In today's video we're going to be giving the software a little bit of a review as, look at, as well as looking at some of the features although I will highlight that I'm not really going to be touching on much of the QWAN features. That's a full separate video along with all of the Wi-Fi 6 speed and performance testing that we're going to be utilizing with 10GBE NAS. Pretty much all of the devices that we're looking at today are going to be over 1GBE that are on the network as well as a few Wi-Fi 5 devices connected to it. Uh, I am using a Windows PC here and this Windows PC, although it does have uh, a Wi-Fi 6 card inside, um, it is a uh, two times two card inside there and I am utilizing it just a single gigabit So that will present itself later on in the video But do reserve judgment on Wi-Fi 6 performance for my full Wi-Fi 6 video coming very very soon Also, I am utilizing Chrome on a Windows PC So that's enough about the local client device that I'm utilizing. Let's talk about the switch first thing we want to do is log into this device and I will say, um, as per my previous video when we looked at a lot of the hardware features and the setup guide, this is a very user-friendly device. I like a lot of the presentation here, and I would argue that QNAP have borrowed a few little things in terms of the UI from a few other companies to keep it as straightforward as possible. There's a lot of uh, distinction between this and a lot more of their complex, oh, complex is probably a little bit aggressive, um, a little bit more over-informative UI from some of their NASs. We're looking at one of their ZFS NASs here on screen, uh, the H886. It's a QVS, uh, QUTS Hero device. As you can see, things are a lot more kind of analytical and texty. It does give you a lot of information on their NAS UI, and I am genuinely a fan. But if you are intimidated by a lot of these things, you'll be pleased to hear that the QHORA router doesn't have any of that stuff and it's far, far more clear, a little bit more graphical, and definitely easier to read, and a lot more chewable and friendly. Definitely a great deal more than the likes of Netgear and some of the other routers that we've looked at previously. So this is what you see when you log into the device. By default, the IP is 192.168.101, and you'll find the device utilizing the QFinder software, the same software you use to find NASs. Now, if you are using a NAS that is connected via multiple Ethernet connections, they'll both be present there. But as you can see, any device connected to this particular router will have that prefix, as you'd expect from an IP. Now, going into the user uh, software, this is the main dashboard you see here. And again, this can be accessed both via the network and via the internet if you set up a QNAP ID and uh, network access, uh, sorry, internet access there. On the front here, we can see how long it's been on, if the firmware's up to date, internal cooling. We can find out lots more information about the WAN interface we're dealing with. In other words, how the internet comes in and the general traffic at a glance. All of these little arrows will take us through to more of the options that we're going to look at later on. As well as you can see the connection status and the number of client devices at any given time. As well as if you have multiple um, virtual access points activated and all of these correspond to different SSIDs or virtual LANs later on that we're going to talk about. This is where you can use groups of the eight antenna inside to create uh, multiple wireless connections. I'm only using the one right now that I've created for the sake of this video but you can create lots more and it even arrives with several of them preset by default. There's the usual guest network but I would say that I would avoid that one and go for some of these more bespoke ones that we'll go into a little bit more detail later on. Now, if we look at the individual tabs, we can make our way down there. As mentioned, we're not going to look much or indeed at all really at any of the QUWAN functionality, a lot of the SD-WAN stuff, which is rolled into this device. This is a device that's aimed at prosumers and business users that want to go enterprise with multi-site um, architecture and I would argue that right now this video is far more aimed at the prosumer than it is aimed at you guys that are looking at the enterprise functionality. That's going to take a little bit more time to set up on my side and I'm going to have to make sure I've got more than one QWAN device set up in order to fully show those features and functionality. So that will come but in a future video. Now if we go to the clients tab 
we can find out all the devices that are currently connected to this system. Now, as you can see here, we've got multiple um, devices all in the network here. We have got this desktop device that I'm on right now, and then we've got some other NAS devices connected. Likewise, I've got this desktop PC connected both via the ethernet and via the network, which is why it's appearing twice, and there's even historical data as well. If we go into that NAS mentioned earlier on, we can find out more information about it. We can even rename that device for future reference and it will identify it by its MAC address later on. Scrolling down, we can see that, again, we can choose whether we want to block one of these devices and when a device is blocked, it will appear here on this list and you can review that list uh, periodically as you choose. Moving along, we can go into the network tab and this tab is far more designed towards the wired network. It does feature um, other areas, but predominantly this largely graphical display is targeted towards that of connected wired devices. As you can see, I have connected different kinds of devices. We've got a couple of 1G devices here on the network, but on top of that, I've also ensured that I've got a low grade 100 megs. And I just wanted to see whether the device would still access it and see it. I'm connected to my um, internet or my wide area network via the port 1 here, which is by default what we've set. But if you are utilising um, that particular SD-WAN environment or you have a higher grade uh, router or switch connection and you want to upgrade that WAN towards the 10G setup, you can indeed select different WAN configurations each of which is detailed here on the scenario guide on the right. Each of the individual connections, we can go in and alter their access mode. So if we look at that very, very low grade connection there, we can head in and we can change if we want to uh, create a trunk or go ahead and leave it as it is. So if we go further down, we can go ahead and look at port four, which is a 1G connection there. And that is a standard one gigabit ethernet connection there. And that 1G connection is going into here. So if we go into the trunk mode, we need to go ahead and select whether we're going to create a VLAN and then move forward from there. We've got a little bit more fun and games in our setup guide on this device where we go into that in a little bit more detail. But it might be a little bit too technical for this. Now, if we go down to the WAN settings, we can see which um, of our ports we've pre-designated as the wide area network. Sorry, I'm recording this um, in a remote location. You can probably pick up some crazy seagulls there in the background. And it gives you a little bit more information about that WAN connection. And you can find out more about the architecture right the way down to the MTU and its impact on the network environment. Moving forward uh, even further, we can go into the LAN connections. And this is where all of our devices are connected in my case. Um, predominantly NAS based here and we can get a little bit more information on active traffic and of course if we like um, as I've already set up in advance I've already gone ahead and set up some remote access so right now we can do a very quick performance benchmark check, check here in the background I'm using AJA this is on the H based NAS here and using Wi-Fi 6 and at the moment I'm approximately I'd say six meters away from the switch right now, uh, from the router I should say. So if we run a test right now, we can see that over Wi-Fi 6 at this distance, I am already getting pretty decent little Wi-Fi speed there, uh, definitely comparable to that of 1GBE. And this is just over Wi-Fi. Now, if I close the distance, I could probably get somewhere in the region of maybe 115, 120. But for now, we're seeing some reasonable enough speeds here for this Wi-Fi 6 connection over this kind of distance. Uh, to the NAS and certainly as a wireless connection we are getting what I would expect as LAN speeds there. Now each of those connections are detailed there and you can get information from them but there's not a vast amount of configuration. Now this was one of the things that I raised during my hardware review when I talked about as much as I like the QHORA I think it flies a little too close to the sun in a number of ways and kind of makes its own errors for itself. The QNAP has a huge range of uh, switches and even a dedicated switch application in QNET switch in their range of switches for managed switches and even the combined combo switch with NAS and the Guardians. But a lot of that switch capability is absent here in the router. Some might argue that you don't need that kind of functionality on a router when you could just connect a network switch to one of these 10G ports 
I disagree. I think a lot of users might like to have that functionality built into the router, and I'd like to see that maybe included in the future, because otherwise these options do feel, although very user-friendly and presented remarkably well, the minute you dig a little deeper, it does feel the tiniest bit shallow there. Now, virtual LANs are when we're going to create our virtual uh, sub network. So if we go in, we can go to the virtual LAN, and from here, we can actually designate individual ports that are going to go into our virtual LAN and then create those trunks. But for now, we're going to leave those alone, but it's nice to have those options. But I think a number of you aren't really going to go down this road unless you are a business user. And again, you can go ahead with the current existing or you can play around um, and alter the ones that are preset by default with their own IPs and um, added LAN ports. You can change a lot of the routing options here in the background. And again, a lot of these is if you're going to be using DHCP or if you're going to be using static routing within the device. And you can assign these values to individual ports uh, in the other settings. But there isn't that much control here unless you want to create a preset static route here. With regards to wireless um, control, as mentioned, the system does allow numerous different Wi-Fi networks. And by default, it will create three, although only one is activated by default. You can go ahead and deactivate these or alter their preset values in a number of ways. You can assign them to that virtual LAN. So if you've created a virtual LAN earlier, you can assign this different Wi-Fi network to share with that virtual LAN. So now you have got a separate Wi-Fi connection with a separate LAN of devices. Quite impressive. On top of that, you can utilize the SSID and change the name of it from the default to something a bit more palatable for different team members in your business. Or on top of that, you can change the security, although there is no mention of WPA3 here, which is a little bit of a shame. If we go down, we can enable a schedule for this. So if we want to go ahead and enable it that this Wi-Fi network is only accessible at given times of the day, that is something we can play with. But I would argue that it's um, a shame that we can't see user access here. In a lot of our reviews that we saw with the Synology router system, which doesn't have some of these features, it has to be admitted. One feature it does have that isn't available here is presetting user accounts to individual SSIDs, which is a shame because I think that is a level of control that a lot of us might like. But still the scheduling is still pretty darn useful. And later on I'm going to talk about some of the configuration options to show you guys ways in which you can alter um, user access controls to individual Wi-Fi networks. There is the guest Wi-Fi network, which again, most routers have. And I think in this system, I would largely bin this in favor of one of those other more configurable Wi-Fi networks here. And of course, the configuration of the WPS button is always going to be desirable to those that utilize printers and scanners and TVs and stuff that doesn't have a very easy or indeed at all usable interface of GUI or a KVM to enter password keys. So it's nice to have that option here, even if it is a touch rudimentary pretty much across the board in 2020. The NAT and firewall controls are embedded inside this device as well, and you can create preset roles quite easily. But I will say they do seem a little too chewable and user-friendly for me, and I would have liked probably a little bit more control there. And although we can enable that firewall quite easily, it's still a little bit rudimentary in its control pattern, and particularly for business users who might not be taking advantage of the SD-WAN capabilities, but do want a decent level of firewall control available here. These controls seem a little light on the ground, and I hope to see those upgraded in the product's life. On top of that, then you've then got controls of NAT, and this is where I see that slight difference of UI on the firewall control I would have liked a little bit more a little bit more configuration options certainly whereas on the NAT we see a lot more and indeed with port forwarding a lot more options readily available to you but just that level of detail seems a little absent in other areas and I hope to see more upgrades throughout the firmware we've already seen a lot of changes early doors and a lot of features added I'd like to see a little bit more extension of that control in that port definition 
and the WAN and LAN controls as well as some of the more bespoke network configuration and control that we've seen already. We've already seen QNAP kind of absorb the ability to add new router OSs on their uh, combined network switch devices and um, OS router and stuff like that in virtual machine utilization on their Guardian series is something I would have liked to have seen here. The hardware may seem a little underpowered for that kind of thing, um, with the device arriving with a quad-core ARM-based processor and one gig of memory, but I still think that's enough for this system to maybe host a different OS. Next, we've got the QVPN, and for those that have heard me talk about it before, QNAP have its own VPN services that you can absorb into this, as well as a number of default settings already involved in the system ready to add existing VPN systems. On top of that, those VPN controls in conjunction with uh, mesh VPN um, funnels are all part of that QAN system that we're going to save for another video. The parental controls, of course. This is an area that you would expect, but this is another area where I think the Synology um, uh, router system has a slight advantage you can enable traditional website filters and again you can give them individual names come up with different um, subsystems and sub um, parameters that you can flick between for those rules so you can add certain websites that have filters built into them so they'll have those parental controls extended as well as already forcing pre-searches uh, and pre-safe search I should say to certain websites but even then the list isn't exactly massive, and I do think you have a greater range of control on the Synology router system than what we're seeing here. Still good options, but I'd like to see this a little bit more evolved, maybe absorbing a lot of the uh, parameters of Google Safe Search and Google's own um, router options built into this, as we've seen from the Synology brand there. Still nice options, and it's good to have it with a lot of premium grade routers at the moment hiding options behind paywalls it's nice to see that QNAP uh, offer this without a subscription service if we go into the system settings we can change a lot of the ways in which this system is set up I am currently utilizing this um, I would argue in a slightly iffy mode and um, with this device in its truest form you should be using it directly connected to the internet and not using um, what I'm using at the moment, but it's nice to have these options configurable and the way you change it as well Really, I should have switched selected AP mode for this device Which is something I'm going to do for my next video to show a lot of the performance benefits with regards to Wi-Fi 6 and 10G But for the sake of the software overview, it was just easier to set it up in this mode If we go further down, we can look at the event logs and as you can see as you disconnect and reconnect devices it will let you know throughout all the stuff that's happening in the background. And if you pair this device with a um, QNAP remote access account, um, you can get a lot of this information directly to you. If you go along, you can have a look at the settings here where we can change some of the bits and bobs, the names, as well as create restore points and save our settings to restore it later on and alter the audio alerts, how and when they happen, as well as what they mean. Access controls can be changed, and this is where we can bind that remote access account to have a lot of these options and control accessible via the internet, not just via the network. And we can create individual user accounts as well, but it doesn't have the same range as you might see from the likes of QNAP with only a single accessible account. And of course, you have to make sure that you set up remote management here in order to enable um, the, um, remote level access. Now, the USB settings, I would say, is an area where I was a little bit disappointed by the Q router. I know this device does support the Q file mobile application that allows you to um, connect to this router and access an external drive uh, via the mobile application, which is great. But accessing an uh, external drive on this device uh, via the web browser is actually pretty terrible. If you access... For example, the storage on a NAS, you have File Station, and it opens up in this File Manager, which is all lovely and lovely and accessible and visible, and I'm genuinely a fan of that. But if you try to access an external drive like this, a USB drive that I've connected to one of the USB ports here via 
the web browser on the router you have to enable the FTP service and then from there you can access the drive here so in this case we can see that drive is connected you have to open it up in a brand new tab and I'll show you what a tab looks like with no drive inside and then it will allow you to access the drive with user credentials but it doesn't feel particularly organic you log in and then the drive is displayed as an FTP index, which is not fantastic. As you can see, we've got the blank drive port, but again, not a vast amount of control in my eyes, and that's not really what I would have liked. So for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of the way they've gone about file access via that USB port. And if we go into the settings of the router, right click, go to map network drive, the system will check in the background if a network drive or indeed a file structure is accessible remotely via the software. We log in. And as you can see, it's not finding that device in the same way because it is not listed as a NAS and we can't access that drive. It would have been nice to be able to map that flash drive this way, but that's not really something a lot of people are going to use. But again, it's nice to have the ability to make a USB drive as an FTP server for remote level access, both externally and internally. But I would have liked to have seen file level access like I do on a NAS. So hopefully that's another area where later firmware updates will improve. And of course, talking of firmware, you can update the firmware regularly. I've got the latest version, but as new firmware updates appear, they will appear on this list. And that's really it. Those are all the options of the Q-Router overview there. What do I think of it? Well, I definitely think QNAP have tried to toe a line to keep things simple. One of the criticisms a lot of their UI have had over the years is that they've not had the most user-friendly user interface. Although they do challenge a lot of what we expect from our data storage, both from their network switches to NAS drives themselves in their portfolio, they have kept things a lot more user friendly than they have before, but it is arguable that they provide a lot of services that no one else does, and a lot of them are just too complex a subject to dull down too much. But in the case of the router, I think they've kept it a little too simple. They've kept things too cheerful and user friendly, and I think perhaps an advanced tab down here that allowed a lot more of the complex options to be visible would be advisable because right now I think they've kept it a little too easy and too chewable and although it certainly brings a whole number of features that are just not available on Netgear and also presents them in a far far better way I think they may have done things down a little bit too much for some users and Although I do like the Q Horror and I do recommend it, I think this, the software does need a tiny bit more work down the line. Other than that, I'm looking forward to showing you guys Wi-Fi 6 and 10G performance in my next video, as well as later down the line when I get the whole thing set up, some of that Q WAN activity to show you guys the benefits of a Q WAN structure in a small, medium and even large business. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like if you did and click subscribe to learn more. Check out my hardware review that should already be live and do visit the links in the description to the full long form review of this device as well as the guys at span.com to get hold of one of these devices for yourself. Yes, it's a plug, but they've been in the business long enough and have the best reputation out there for this. You should trust them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.